exciting to, to have one of your guys have their jersey retired first one? Yeah, it's just a it's a wonderful feeling. It's like a proud parent. A lot of you guys are parents, so you know the feeling. Um, you know, to have Clint um, go in with the very first class of inductees to have their jerseys retired at the university is, is a wonderful uh, recognition of his achievement. And uh, you just you just like a proud proud papa. You want to step back and and watch and uh, enjoy. But uh, you know, it's really uh, justly deserved. And I really thank you know Coach Tanner and the athletic department and the entire initiative to set this uh, thing in motion. How does it kind of come together, picking him? What kind of role did you kind of have in that? Well, there's a committee mm -hmm. that, that, that does that. The coaches put forth their uh, nominees, and then there's a committee that does that. And, um, you know, we were just really honored to have Clint be one of the people selected. What was that moment like, first when he was selected, then when you got to make the call and tell him that? Yeah, that was great. Uh, I was in Coach Tanner's office, and Coach, you know, Tanner called him, and uh, as, as Clint said, he was on the other end. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, it was uh, emotional and it was memorable. You know, it's it's one of those uh, place marking moments where you feel like, wow, this is this is a great thing that's happening. What are your memories of him as an 18-year-old coming here? 17. 17. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, 93, we played in the championship game. Clint came in in 94. And we had a really good team in 94. We had all a lot of pieces in place. And Clint came in as a vibrant attacking guy that, you know, could just basically do his thing. And we had everybody around him to kind of hold the fort. Um, and you could tell then, you know, it's tough when you come in as a young guy and you're coming into an established team. Um, you know, they, they, he did, had to earn his way into, the, into that group. Um, but the talent, you know, and the ability, everybody could see there was going to be something really great there. Um, oddly enough, I tell this story all the time. I don't know if Clint believes it or not. But, you know, at the end of that year, Clint was, as a player, switching on and switching off. In other words, any time the ball was near him, bam, he was electric, he was going. But throughout his career, he had just been the guy that everybody gets the ball to, and then the game changes. At the college level, it's a little bit different. Everything's tighter. The transition is tighter. The defending is tighter. The organization of opponents is tighter. So we really worked on his defending, actually. And uh, not that he was going to win the ball, you know, or be the guy making the tackle, but he was in the moment then when the ball changed. And that difference of being completely in the moment, not switching in, switching out, um, I think was really a big factor in him, you know, leading the nation and scoring the next year, um, consensus All-American. And, you know, again, I'm, we didn't try to turn him into a defensive player. We just tried to make him really aware of both sides of the ball. And I think that was a big growth period for Clint in his career. And, you know, of course, he never looked back after that. Coach? You remember that Clemson game he's, he's talking about? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the atmosphere in this place was was great, you know. And, um, you know, a lot of times you, you get something, you give something up. But um, we didn't have a big stadium at that point. The stadium was built uh, in 95, so right after in his second year. Um, and But, you know, the fans were right on top of the players. I mean, there was like a, a tape barrier here. And when a guy took a throw and he had to back up into the crowd, you know, to take the throw in. So it was very uh, hostile place to play. Um, and now, obviously, you know, you get something else. You get a beautiful facility, but it's a little more antiseptic than it was back in those days. It was, it was a little uh, hostile for people here. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, again, uh, thanks to, again, Mike McGee, you know, for uh, putting things in motion for us and Eugene Stone for building the stadium. And, you know, Clint was, uh, you know, outstanding in that first year we were in here. You were watching him play during his college years. Did you think this was possible, that one day he would be honored like this? Well, um, not really because we didn't have this mechanism in place. You know, I mean, Coach Tanner put this – and, 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 you know, his executive staff put this whole thing together. But to know that he would be one of the greats, yeah, you knew he was going to be big in the game. You know, you don't know that a guy's going to go on and, and have, uh, I think, 40-something matches with the national team um, a number of years in the MLS, have the goal of the year in the MLS, be on the ESPYs, um, score in the World Cup to put us through to the next round. Did I know that? 
No, no, I didn't. I didn't have that one pulled up in my head. But um, to know that he was going to go on and be special, yeah. I mean, I think everybody knew that, and um, you know, it's a credit to him. I'm going to say something else. Um, a lot of people don't realize what Clint had to go through to get where he is. Um, you see the end result, and you think, "Wow, he's had a great career." But he, after, after the in the the NCAA tournament at the end of his sophomore year when he was leading the nation in scoring he uh, tore his ACL here and had to have that operated on um, had to wear a brace his entire second year is his after that his third year um, then went in was drafted by LA uh, went on in and played with LA and the Metro Stars then tore his other ACL had to come back from that um, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was only a short time before the World Cup, you know, still made the World Cup roster, you know, and was, you know, so he came back from a lot of things. Um, those are not insignificant injuries, and the guy just has a willpower, and, and you know, he, he overcame a lot of things, and I think that's the key to his success has been, yeah, he's got some flamboyance and some irreverence and you know anybody that played with him or watched him you guys are all kind of young but uh you know he didn't he didn't he made his own rules as he played the game and that's what he's most remembered for but not many people remember what he had to overcome to play and uh that's a lot of work that ha that goes on off camera um that, that to put him back where he could play and and i think that's a real big um important part of who clint is today you know where you were when he scored the goal in the world cup uh, I don't remember where, but I remember going completely crazy. <laughs> There's two goals, his goal and then Landon's goal in the World Cup are two that I, you know, probably almost passed out because I jumped some, from a sitting position to a standing position so fast. Yeah, but uh, unbelievable. I mean, you've seen it. You guys have all seen it. But to, to, to receive a ball over the top and receive it with one foot and strike it in the next step with the other foot and finish – in that environment, as the visiting team against the home team, to silence the team, the entire stadium is just unbelievable. And so, yeah, great moment. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I, I surely do. Mohawk. I think Pat's, uh, uh, Clint's mom, Pat, and I thought about the same of the Mohawk. Not exactly our favorite look. Um, <laughs> I don't think Bruce Arena thought it was all that great either, but no one was going to be telling Clint what he was going to do uh, pretty much at any point in his career. So that's that's just the kind of guy he is, and that's the what, what, why he is the way he is, because he's got that uh, he's got that attitude. He had kind of like long, long, flowing hair when he would debut. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. The Mohawk didn't come out until later on, but uh, yeah.